Alrighty, <clears throat> I'm going to do a tutorial now about how to create an expanding UI table view cell. So like you've seen in the calendar app, you have a list of cells and maybe it's a date picker and you click on the cell and it expands, drops down and you see a nice date picker, pick your date, close those up. Sometimes it'll display what the date you picked is on the right of the cell. Anyway, so that's what we're going to build. And for this example, I'm going to um, just use a date picker, but you could also abstract this to be a picker view and a date picker or anything like that. So, to get started here, let's create a new project in Xcode and let's call it uh, Cell Expander. And make sure you use Swift and iPhone for those options there. Alright, so to begin, we're going to need a table view controller here. So let's rename this. Okay, and we can go ahead and knock these out for now. Uh, we probably won't need them for this uh, example. So, and then let's jump over to storyboard. We're also going to erase everything here. And we want to create a table view controller, just like this. And let's also embed it in a navigation controller. So make sure it's selected and then embed in navigation controller. That'll give us just a nice fancy bar at the top. And let's act like this is in the middle of the app and say, like, choose date. And let's see, just for kicks, let's throw in an item here. And we'll make this a cancel and a, let's see, a done button. Okay, so this is like an example of a component that you'll be plugging in your app. So we'll make it look like that. Okay, so what you need to do now is we're going to expand this guy to be, let's say, like 200. Okay, and we're going to need a you know, a date picker. Okay, and I'm going to hook this up using auto layout, but uh, don't worry too much about these. Um, I may discuss them in a later tutorial. Okay, we'll drag our labels out here. Let's just do uh, one for now, but you could always add a different one. Okay, now um, before we get too much farther, we're going to need to create our custom UI table view cell subclass. So let's go ahead and create a new file here. And let's call this picker table view cell. Okay, so here we're going to need to import UI kit since we're dealing with UI components. And picker table view cell. And this is going to be, as I mentioned, the subclass of UI table view cell. And here, um, so we now have the class defined. So in the storyboard, we can select the whole cell here and we can set the class. Uh, sorry. Select the cell and then say picker table view cell. Okay, now if we open this other guy up in a side panel, so if you hold down option and then click, it'll open a side panel here. So we will hold down the label, you're gonna hold down control and drag it over here to create a label. Outlet. So we'll call this title label. Okay, and then here we'll call this, not very surprisingly, a date picker. All right, so now I have our outlet set up. So back in this uh, subclass here, um, I'm gonna go ahead and define a couple constants. Now Swift doesn't have constants yet, but um, you could sort of fake it out by doing this. So I want to have a variable for the expanded height. And this will be used both internally and in the table view. And to work with the rest of UIKit, we're gonna need to make it a CG float. So we're just gonna define a get for this function or for this property and let's just return 200 because that's what we set in the storyboard and then while we're defining here constants let's go ahead and declare this uh, the default height to be 44 because we can use that and not have to worry about 
magic numbers. So we'll have a name here to refer to them by. Okay, so the way this works is <clears throat> your cell, when it's hidden, I'm sorry, when it is collapsed, it's going to hide the date picker. Now, you could create a relationship in the table view controller to the cell and tell it, oh, hey, you're collapsed here, so you need to um, you know, hide or whatever you need to do. But there's a nicer way to, to decouple it from the controller, and that's using the key value observe. Uh, <clears throat> and I'll cover the details of this in just a moment. But what we're going to need to do is we'll create a function called check height, and this function is going to be called by the table view controller. And what we're going to say is our date picker should be hidden when our uh, height is less than our expanded height. And you could say if it equals the default height, either way. So, but that's going to be the function we're going to use. So now, over in our table view controller, let's go ahead and set things up for the uh, default stock methods here. So here for our number of sections, I'm just going to say one and for our number of rows, let's, uh, let's make two so you can sort of see this in action when we, when we get to the result. Now of course we're also going to need a self or row index path. So here uh, we're going to go ahead and just DQ the cell. Uh, now we're also going to need an identifier from the storyboard. Usually um, you're going to want to define a constant. Uh, well actually, you know what, let's just go ahead and do that. So up here, you say let uh, cell ID equal cell. Something like that. And then that's your variable that you would use because usually in applications you'll be using it in other places. In this example we're not going to, but for best practice that's, that's what we should do. Okay, so now um, let's just go ahead and set the, the title label of this guy. And let's set it to be test title. And then we'll return the cell. And it looks like I have a problem here. Oh, oh right, sorry. Uh, you need to cast this as the class in question because this title label is only defined in the picker table view cell. Um, we also could say um, set the date picker's date to be date by adding time interval. Let's do something crazy like that. Anyway, so you can, you can configure it. It's not really necessary, so I won't focus on that now. Okay, so now when we select the row, so did select row at index path, we're going to have to do a couple of things in here. We really want to store the selected index path as a variable up here so that we know when to collapse things and when to expand things. Because you only want one cell expanded at a time. That's the pattern as seen in the calendar app or other third party apps like day one. So here we're going to have a selected index path. And this is going to be index path optional because it's going to begin as nil because we're coming in from the storyboard. So we're not going to be able to have a designated initializer for now. So when we get in here, we're going to need to say, we're going to track actually the previous index path as well. So So this is going to be our selected index path to start out with. And then we're going to say if our index path already matches the selected index path, that means that it was selected and then we're going to select it, we're selecting it again and we want to then collapse the cell. So here then we just set it to be nil. And otherwise we're going to set it of course to be the current index path. So we're just selecting a cell, that's the one that's going to get, need to get expanded. So now this, this works fine, but we also need to tell the table view, hey, these are the, the rows that you need to reload. And we would like to not just call the uh, reload data. So that would work, but it's preferable because you get the animation of it expanding, either fading or swapping out the cell 
if you don't use reload data. So here we're gonna actually figure out which index path we need to reload. And there's a couple of scenarios here, so we're gonna use two if statements. So this index path thing is going to be um, an array of these index paths, and we'll initialize it to empty array. And so then we're gonna use explicit optional unwrapping. So we're gonna say the previous uh, index path, we're gonna set this to be previous index path, so that's gonna unwrap it. And so then we'll just add that to the index path as long as the previous one exists. Because you know when you're first coming in here, there's not gonna be a previous, so we only wanna add it if it actually exists. And we'll do the same thing with the current um, selected index path. So add that. Okay, so, so now if the index pass is greater than zero, we will go ahead and tell the table view, hey, you need to reload these rows of these index paths. So I'll give it the index paths. And the row animation, you can use whatever. Uh, for now, I'm just gonna use automatic. And that's the shorthand enum uh, notation, but Let's see, what is the full one? UI table view row animation dot automatic. Okay, so now we have a handle where if you select the row at the index path, it's going to reload the rows. So let's go ahead and see uh, what we're doing now. <clears throat> All right, we got nothing. So let's see, uh, failed to instantiate because the designated entry point is not set. This is an easy one to forget, especially if you delete the initial controller. So here we're gonna actually set the navigation controller to be, let's see, the initial view controller. Now let's relaunch. Okay, so this is really exciting. We have nothing going on here. Let's go back and see, see what the deal is. So here, let's go ahead and set a breakpoint here and make sure we're getting into this. Okay, we are not. So let's go back to the storyboard. Okay, now one thing. Let's see. We did not set this reuse identifier. I said you need to do that, and I didn't do it. Uh, let's double check, make sure that this wasn't the issue. Okay, so there's there's something else missing here. Let's make sure the data source delegate are set there. Okay, something is wrong here. So let's make sure we get in here. Oh, you know what? We forgot to, I forgot to set the whole class to be our table view controller. So nothing is happening. So that should be fixed. Let's see what happens. Aha, excellent. Well, not really, but it's interesting. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and with the table view controller. So we have the selection going on here. Now we really need to tell the cell to to watch the frame. And this is what I was saying earlier about the key value observing. So we're gonna actually override the table view method here. Uh, table view will select, let's see will display cell. And so here, we're gonna tell the cell, so we're gonna have to cast it to our custom class as picker table view cell. And then we're gonna say, hey, I want you to watch the frame changes, okay? And we'll also do the same thing for when it ends displaying. We will tell it to unwatch them. So with key value observing, it's very important that you do not forget to, um, Unwatch things, and I'll, I'll get to watching in just a second. Okay, sorry. And did end. Sorry. Did end displaying cell. And let's call this ignore frame changes. And that will uh, unwatch our frame. So let's go ahead and implement these methods over in this picker table view cell. So here. We will say watch frame changes. And the other one? 
ignore frame changes. Okay, so what we're going to do in the watch frame changes, we're going to call this method add observer. So we're going to so we're we're calling this method on self. So ourself, we're going to watch, we're going to give an observer to ourself actually. And our key path is going to be our frame. And this means that whenever the frame changes, we're going to get some sort of a uh, method call, and I'll explain that in a second. Um, there's a couple of options here we could do. Really all we care about is new, um, but actually most of the options would probably work fine. And then we don't have to worry about the context, and that's, that would be a naming thing. So ignore frame changes. This is going to be remove observer and frame. Now we also could extract this key here to be a um, variable for now. I'm just I'm not going to. So the way key value observing works, we're going to there's a designated method observe value for key path that will get called on these changes. And for safety's sake, we're going to go ahead and check in here. Say hey, if the key path equals frame, then we will do whatever we need to. Which in this case would be our check height method up here. So in other words, when our frame changes, go ahead and check, okay, if the you know the size is small in the expanded height, go ahead and hide it. Otherwise, make it visible. So this is all working together now. So we watch frame, frame changes when we're going to display the cell, and then we ignore it when we're done. And the other thing we'll want to do is this watch frame changes, because our date picker is visible initially in the storyboard, as soon as we call this watch frame changes, we need to go ahead and say, okay, check the height. Because we're you know it's not going to be that expanded height when we first get displayed. So let's take a look at this. Okay, so well we probably should go back to the storyboard to fix this, but the date picker is now not visible, which is good because we're not expanded. But it's not expanding. So let's let's fix that label first. You know, do the important things in life, right? Okay. So now over the table view controller, we never told it to actually change the height. So the method we need to override there is uh, table view height for road index path. So here we're going to say if the index path equals the selected index path, then we need to return the, the expanded version. So this is the expanded height. And likewise, we return the other one the default height otherwise. So this gives control to the cell, as I said, by extracting this into the cell instead of having magic numbers floating around. So let's see how this works. All right, look at that. Excellent. Perfect. OK, and then, of course, we could add some finishing touches here. Uh, the date picker we really want to move down. So we could actually change this expanded height to be something bigger. Uh, actually, you know what? We probably it probably is working. We just need to I just need to fix these constraints. So here, um, just so you know, I'm I'm gonna pin this guy to the left, and I'll pin him to the top, and then this date picker is going to always be the same vertical spacing to the title here. And let's check the uh, the height here. Okay, so it is 200, so that should be right. Let's. See what's going on here. Aha, excellent. Alrighty, and there you go. So we now have a date picker inside of a cell that expands when we click on it, and it shows the other one when it's uh, clicked and hides itself. So there you have it. There is a fully functioning, expanding UI table view cell. Um, I hope you enjoyed this, and I will try in the link below to give you a link to the project so you guys can download it and run it. Thanks.